Hey everyone, welcome back to another update on my ancient Greek themed tower defense game where you control multiverse variants of ancient Greek gods. It has been an extremely eventful two months. Starting in September, we took our game out for the first time in public to a local game dev meetup. This was our first time letting anyone play the game, so we weren't really sure how it was going to go. And of course, there were a lot of bugs to squash, but that was to be expected. What was more important was getting valuable feedback from everyone about how the game played, the controls, the buttons, the interactions, all of it. So I spent the following five weeks implementing changes based on the feedback and all the things that I noticed. But that wasn't the only thing. In early October, Melbourne held the annual Melbourne International Games Week, where we actually got to meet and pitch the game to some publishers. Let's get into some of the recent changes. The first thing was interactions. Tower defense games are known to have a very set and specific structure. You purchase your towers, you upgrade them, then you start the wave. It's a lot like an auto chess game, but mine isn't quite like that. You do have your planning phase, but where in an auto chess you can't actively make decisions based on your previous decisions, here you can. If you have enough money for an upgrade mid-wave, you can purchase it. If enemies are leaking through, place another hero further down the track. You can be as proactive mid-game as you'd like, and not enough people took advantage of this. So I started to add tooltips to sort of help you through that. Things that are considered interactable with in the core game now have a highlight shader applied to them when hovered over using the mouse. The idea here is that even if the player doesn't actively recognize an object to be interactable, while they move the mouse through the scene, the shader may get applied, even temporarily, but hopefully enough that the player notices it and is able to recognize a change in the object's visual state, and maybe experiments with it. They'll notice that certain objects have highlights to them, and when selecting them, events will occur, whether that's a UI pop-up or a text pop-up. Anything that eventually they can associate the highlight with interactions. I also started working on getting better feedback for the hero upgrades. Now, there's still a ways off on this, as I still need to get the descriptions for the upgrades in place, but when purchasing an upgrade, a little pop-up will appear with what has been added to the hero. I'm also considering showing the value updates, like the current damage, then an arrow into the new damage, but I'm not entirely sure about that yet, so please let me know in the comments if that's something you think I should add, or if it would just clutter up the screen too much. Another thing I noticed when watching people play the game was that it wasn't too obvious when a wave has been completed. And I still haven't got a perfect solution to this as I still want the UI to be a little bit better. But I have a little pop-up for when a wave is complete that actually shows rewards and experience gain. I also noticed a lot of people just expecting the waves to run continuously. So I have added support in the options to allow for autoplay waves. So you just press it once and the waves will run continuously throughout the room. The next thing I did was another pass on a UI overhaul. Now UI is a tough one to get right because it's based a lot on the game's aesthetic and as we're still actively working on the art, the aesthetic isn't 100% there yet, but I feel like we're past the stage of placeholders. So I went ahead and did some mock-up designs in A-Sprite and started putting together the main game scene UI. I updated the counter area, so this is where our lives are, the keys, the money, the wave target and the enemies remaining, and I also added in a tile tooltip. When hovering over the grid, every object has a custom name that I can assign, whether this is for lore purposes or just general user experience. I thought this was a good addition in helping the player understand what they're selecting. This was also inspired by Into the Breach and how they have the descriptions for different tiles, which, well, I just think they're neat. The next big thing that I did was finish off the procedural map generator. I have most of the biome art, if not all of the biome art done now. So I felt confident in sort of wrapping it up. We have these big buildings now which will appear in some cases, as well as this golden river, purely to provide some variation in the design of the level. I haven't spoken too much about the biomes, mostly because we've only got one designed properly, but in a sense of a dungeon crawler, they act as a different floor that you would encounter during normal gameplay. In Atlanta TD, there will be four biomes. The first is Ethereon, otherwise known as the City in the Sky. Then there's Nixara, the Night Realm, Talassan, which is the Realm of the Sea, and Geonosis, which is the Realm of Earth. Each biome has a distinct style or aesthetic, and with this map creator, since all maps are procedural, depending on which biome the player will be in, it will replace the necessary art based on the tile set. Now there's actually a bit of work here that I'm doing to extend the support for these maps, which is basically just extending the existing scriptable objects so that they can load in different visuals based on the biome, but there is a lot of code I have to update, so enjoy a quick time lapse of me doing that. Alright, 
right, we've just wrapped up a little coding session where I now have tile variations, which in my map creator, I have added functionality so that we can load the different visuals in. At the moment, the other biomes are just placeholder art as we work on getting the full sprite sheets in. But in the map editor, I have this button here, which can switch the biome tiles. So at least we know it works. I've also been proactive in getting my Trello board back up to date, and this is mainly because there are milestones for this project that we're trying to reach. So categorizing tasks into these milestones makes it a lot easier in prioritizing what we need to be working on. At the moment, we're sort of in between a vertical slice and alpha. Anyway, those are the big updates of what we've been up to in the last two months. There's plenty of smaller things like visual, UI, UX, and the back end of what we've been working on, but keep the surprise brewing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, be sure to subscribe, follow all the socials, and join the Discord to stay up to date with everything I am working on. Thanks for watching.